The road I'm traveling is rocky now and then, and sometimes I lose my way, but I'll make it home one of these days. Hello, folks. Troy Anthony Felder, video seven of Homeless in Louisiana. All right, I'm gonna try to get through this one quickly without a whole lot of jibber jabbing because you know how I do. I can't help it. This is an emotional thing. All right, first of all, let me say, uh, the reason I make these videos is for me to avoid obscurity and to let y'all know what's going on. When I say let y'all know what's going on, that's just not let you know what's going on with me. It's let you know what's going on with your government and your society and the things you know, the duct tape and, and the super glue that holds it together, like, you know, the platitudes and the cognitive dissonance, the things we choose to believe in, change, things we want to believe in, the things that are not true, but we choose the cognitive dissonance. Say, yes, the yours. Anyway, that's what we're getting down to right now. So I think I did not start this video to, to, uh, to ask for money, even though I desperately need money. I do need your sympathy, your empathy, but I do not need your pity, all right? I appreciate your fun. Speaking of such, let me shout out uh, my buddy Jay Todd, uh, Ronnie LeBron, LeBlanc. Those are my, uh, my, my movie buddies right there from the film industry. They were the very first to extend a helping hand. Uh, then, I can't forget, the person who's been telling me they love me for years, and they show it too, Miss Cheryl Allen. Thank you, Cheryl. What's up, Black? Love you too. Uh, and we can't forget uh, my boy B. Dread, Barry Dread Applebaum, all the way from New York City and Florida right now. But used to be the guitar player in my band, T. Ron Divide. He didn't extend it, showed his love too. That's my dude. Thank you, B. However, that's not what I was asking for, but I appreciate it because I do need it. I very much do need it. I'm just trying to get back on track so I can start generating my own funds again, right? You know, so I can work and I can do my thing. But I'm 60, so that's that's another whole talk show. So we're just going to get through this right quick. All right. So now that I've got the shout outs out the way, I want to recap some things to remind some new people or some old people what's, what's going on. Let's see if I can, uh, we can do a little mobile thing. The phone needs charging, so I got a, got my little charger plugged up here, which I charged up at my neighbor's house or oh, the neighbor. Oh, 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 before we go, here's what I was telling y'all in the last video. That go the box to my generator. If I still got the box, you know how new it is, right? You still got the box, it's new. All right, let's go. We'll carry this charger with me. See if we can't make some uh, some kind of. I don't know. I'm. I just want to recap y'all right quick, right? So we're gonna go to the backyard here and start where it all started. We're gonna recap. Oh look, I found my earrings too. They've been MIA since since I moved into this place. Which, by the way has been one month and one week since I've been in here. All right now, check this out. This is my my uh, RV, where this all started. See that right there? That's where this all started. I was living in here when when Hurricane Ida put that tree on, right? Look, it's all terrible right now. Francine came and made it worse, but I ain't gonna lie, it, it was already bad before Francine. I think I showed y'all the video of this, but as you can see, nothing pretty, nothing pretty in there. All right, so we did that. So then after that, I slept on the couch with some, some of my people for four months. Four months I slept on the couch. So then all the while, FEMA kept on uh, trying to give me uh, a FEMA camp, FEMA trailer in a FEMA camp. When I told them I would accept the FEMA trailer, I wanted it on the property. They said, oh no, you need. 
you need primary electricity, but I, I ain't have that because I was I had a generator. I had a generator in the RV and I had an external generator and my neighbor was extending me my neighbor was extending me uh, a line in exchange for like cutting the grass and stuff. So it was cool. So I was literally off the grid. I was living off the grid. But after two years and two and eight months of uh, being in the FEMA camp, dealing with FEMA, dealing with Restore and, and Catholic Charities, all these people trying, supposedly trying to make me not homeless again, right? All they had to do, they gave me $11,000, like four months in actually, four months after the storm, about, no, about three and a half months after the storm, they gave me $11,000, which was not enough to re, re uh, replace this and that is irreparable ir irreparable it's not you can't repair it I even paid one hundred and fifty dollars two hundred actually for uh, an estimate on how much that would cost sent that to FEMA told them I only needed like ten more thousand you give me another ten thousand I could replace that they say no no we're not gonna do that we're gonna put you up in the FEMA account so they did that for two and a half years more than that, two years, eight months. Then they got tired of me, not because they were trying to push me into the, the, the rental system. I didn't want to go in the rental system because you didn't find me in the rental system. You found me here on my property, living in my property, right? So they put me out. So then I had to move into this dilapidated house. This is the, the rear view, actually, because I'm in the backyard of my property, right? That's the, the back of the dilapidated let me give y'all a tour around this thing, all right? Here we go, I done cut it. Oh, look, all my, my tree done grew all over. I grew everything. I used to have all this stuff very manicured. Look at my bees right there. Can y'all see those bees? I don't want to get too close. I think a couple of them bit me the other day when I was cutting the grass. That's a big old honeycomb up in there. But yeah, look, I covered all this. Covered all this with duvetine. This is my atrium room that I showed y'all before, right? Y'all saw my atrium room. This is the front right here. Let me see if I can get y'all a, a big front view here. Let's see what this look like. Hmm? Can y'all see that? From side to side, that's my total property. All that grass is overgrown too. That's my car there that, that the parish wants to tow away because they're considering it junk. It's not a junk car. But here we go. All this do I put up, yeah, it needs work. A lot of stuff is dry rot. Dry rot, but we're working on it, right? So I need to recover this car. This wall was an add-on. This whole room was an add-on. That's why it totally is dry rotted, fell apart. That's the wall I was telling y'all about with the door connected. Remember I made the video about the wall falling with the door frame? Now look how dry rotted that is. That's just dry rot. But anyway, hey, folks, all this shit is mine. It's mine. Look at that. I got a pecan tree leaning on a black walnut tree. I cut all that. I still need to cut that up behind. But all this was as tall as that. Actually, that was taller. The, the storm knocked that down a little bit. That was like 15 feet high right there. A little easy right now. I can go in there with my machete and kind of chop it down. And anyway, as you see, maintained, right? A washing machine, a lawnmower. Oh, yes. Yes, I still have to, even, it's not 3 o'clock or 1 o'clock in the morning, but I still need to wash clothes, y'all. You have to maintain. You have to maintain, right? So, long story short, here we are back in here for a month. Give y'all that tour. Let's go back inside, out of the sun. So I give y'all that tour. After they got tired of me for two years and eight months, they kicked my ass out, knowing that this was the only place I had left to go. They didn't care. They gave my account to uh, Catholic Charities and said, do what you got to do. You ain't our problem no more. That's what they said, pretty much. Right? 
So, so here we are. That's where I've been. That's why I started making these videos. So I don't go crazy. So I don't go crazy. And I don't just die in obscurity. And everybody will be like, what happened to Troy? I don't know. I don't know, man. So I want y'all to know that. That's pretty much the catch up. So, so now I've been in here for a year now. So as soon as I got in here, like within a week that I moved in here, uh, Restore calls me, tell me they want to restart my goddamn uh, account. Right? What? Whoa. See what had happened. I think I said this in another video too, but I'm going to see if I can zip right through it right quick. I, I applied for the, the RV because that was my place of dwelling at the time of the storm. But when the guy came to inspect, he said he was taking all the pictures of, of the dilapidated house. And I told him, hey, say, hey, hey, that's not my place of dwelling. My paperwork is the RV. He's like, well, it seemed like a waste that we spent all this money without just fixing all this when we could just fix all this. I'm like, hey, if you can make that happen, you the dude. So he did it. So he got them to focus on my whole property, right? And they, that's what they were talking about, spending upwards of 200000 Cool. They were going to cut down a the tree. They were going to put all the stuff, because I got a lot of stuff in storage here that I took out of storage and I keep in this house, right? So... They were going to put that in storage while they tear down the house and make space for the new house that they was going to put in, right? So, uh, so, but then they found out, them and uh, I, me and them found out the same day, me and Restore found out the same time that I, my property was in judication. I didn't know. I thought I was living tax-free. Uh, you know, I think I, I, I went into more detail than the past video. Quick, quick, quick. I went to the assessor's office. He said, all you got to do is live your life. That's all you got to do. I had my papers in hand saying, I'm the new owner. What do I have to do? He said, live your life. Well, I spent an hour there talking to him. We took a look, looking at Google Earth pictures about the whole community. And he telling me, all this is exempt. Unless it's, under, unless it's over 75000 My property is not worth more than 75000 So he said, live your life. You're exempt from all this shit. Cool. So then come to find out. To, to restore while they trying to do my property that no they've been charging me property taxes since 2015 without me even knowing it so it accumulated to be like eight grand which is like nine grand right now because this was in 2023 last year last year summertime this time so now that restore wants to start up they want to start with the rv thing again they, now they they don't care if the property is in Judication because they're not focusing on the property as a whole. They're focusing on my RV. So because I'm still homeless, so they focus on not making me homeless again. So now they've granted me what they call this award. They granted me this award of eighty five thousand, so I can uh, purchase a trailer, a single wire trailer, right? But the caveat is that I have to still have the eleven thousand dollars that FEMA gave me because they can't duplicate what FEMA did. Right, I don't have that. That was three years ago, and and I couldn't do shit with it. And I pinched off it. I didn't go to to, to Vegas and spend it on hookers and blow. I didn't do that. I pinched off, and I tried to find a way to to uh, replace my home. Was not enough. Asked you for more. Asked you for ten thousand more. You didn't give it to me, but you proceeded to spend upwards of of forty thousand dollars just to keep me in your camp for for uh, two years and eight months. Well, you could have just gave me a portion of that and I would have been out of your hair. But I digress. So, here we are. So now they want me to have the 11000 for a down payment, right? I don't have that. So, when the woman called and told me that, oh, the good news, we've granted you the award. But you got to have the 11000 for a down payment. Well, fuck you. Have a nice life, lady. I'm tired of playing your game. That's pretty much it. So, I told her. Then she talked me off the ledge and like, oh, no, no. It's flexible. It's, it's, it's very... What was the word she fluid is the word that she used. It's very fluid. So I would sign it up. I would uh accept the grant if I was you. So I did. She talked me out the ledger, I accepted the grant. So now uh I'm trying to put that together. I'm trying to do these things. But then now I got my my what they call the construction worker. She's evading me. I, I don't know what she's doing. She told me she sent me an email on the 13. I ain't not no email. And I called her every day last week. She hasn't even returned my calls or sent me a new email. I don't know what she's doing. Anyway, folks, I think that's a good recap. I talk really fast. I try to do as best I possibly can. So, till next time.
Till the next time, folks, stay strong.